The United States is at the epicenter of the evil in the world, and we are the soldiers of the future, and the miraculous metal is our weapon. But it is not only our weapon, it is our shield, it is our helmet, it is our rear guard because it connects us in a profound way to the Blessed Mother and her grace of the Immaculate Conception. As the vision that revealed it showed us, those that wear it around the neck will receive graces upon graces. But for us to have confidence in the Miraculous Medal and the promises given to it from heaven, we need to experience that power in our lives, first through the stories of other people and what they experienced, and then for us personally. That's what we focus on in today's part of the interview. If you want to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee. Let's get into this. This young man, this former Freemason, end up confessing, but they talked for hours. And that was the beginning of him reuniting with his Catholic faith and his family. And my friend met him in Medjugorje because he traveled all the way over there to thank the Blessed Mother for saving his life. These kinds of things are happening. That's an unusual tale of getting out of it, but that happened through the Blessed through the Miraculous Medal, and um, it's happening today just as it happened in Maximilian Kolbe's time. Yeah, that, that's an amazing story. You know, that, that was something that um, when I kind of first became part of the MI and, and just thought about that, I didn't personally know any Freemasons, but but if you, I, I've seen in my life that when you pay attention to the things that God wants you to, you begin seeing all of the places where, where it is. And if you do that, you'll see a lot of cars that have the, the Freemason sign. I like to some, sometimes go to cemeteries to pray for the, the souls in purgatory. You'll see a lot of graves with that Freemason mm. symbol. If you mm. go to Washington, D.C., it's everywhere, mm. you know, and, and, and our country, because of the media, is, is incredibly influential in the world. So what country, you know, other than the U.S., that, that's that's what that, that's why the, 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 uh, Satan wants to grab us and and kind of possess our country because of the influence that it has throughout the world. So you kind of think about it that like just as St. Maximilian Kolbe was in the middle of, of that war, those of us that live here in the U.S., um, we're right in the middle of the epicenter of evil. And, and I don't know if we really are aware of that. Mm -hmm. And so and so we're really the instruments that God can use and maybe maybe Freemasonry is the main way that this evil comes into our country. I don't know. I don't I don't understand all of how that works, but from some of the things that you say and from how St. Maximilian Kolbe responded to it, it's something serious that we should think about. You know, that there was even I've even had a few encounters with different people where where um they were Catholic, but but they oh they were also at, at a lower level of Freemasonry and had no idea that it was evil. No. So, Maybe some of the people listening to this, you have um, fathers or, or some sort of, I know that that if you have a father or a grandfather or some sort of paternal lineage mm -hmm. where there's a Freemason, Freemason connection, that that when they have their, their initiation ceremonies, they kind of, they bind their children down several generations because, you know, Satan doesn't want just the person, but all your, all your children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So, so you have some things that, um, that you have to renounce and get rid of, you know, so I think this is some things for people to think about and consider and become aware of. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of people out there who are Catholic who have a relative who's a Freemason, and it seems like a good thing, because, you know, evil doesn't show up as a gargoyle and say, I'm going to eat you, come follow me. It, sh it shows up as something good. And that's why it's so confusing. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's extraordinary. I I had no idea. You walk, you drive around our beautiful country, the United States of America, and you'll see signs. You know those signs that have the plaques of what's inside the town, mm -hmm. and there's Masonic symbols there quite often. Yeah. Uh, in San Francisco, where I used to live, there's a huge Masonic hall, and Marino Restrepo, whose story is in the Warning Book, he talked about how if people aren't praying and a church isn't alive and there isn't a, a huge Catholic influence, you will have that church start to die and you will see Masonic things pop up in that same area. Mm -hmm. But if you have a strong presence 
of people who believe, you'll find that that Masonic Lodge struggles. And so there's, you know, you can see a, the warfare going on in terms of what buildings are around, truly. And you see them everywhere. And and I just always wonder, what, what is this? It's not about brick building. It's not about masonry. <laughs> yeah. It's it's quite hidden. And, you know, it's the number one secret society uh, in the U.S. and perhaps the world. And so it's a secret. That's why you don't know. That's why the lower levels don't know. But yeah. um but unfortunately, they have an agenda of destroying the church. And St. Maximilian Kolbe was very, very aware of that. Yeah. And it's amazing that that uh, it's awesome that we don't have to understand everything about how that organization works, other than just that the Miraculous Medal is, is maybe specifically made as an antidote to it. So that if you know what that is and you give it to them, the Blessed Mother takes care of the rest. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, you know what you know what would be wonderful. An idea is to take some blessed metals and you know hide them around these Masonic buildings. You know, Mother Teresa would throw Saint Mother Teresa would throw miraculous metals when she wanted something to happen in a certain location. So uh, we can do our we can do creative things. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, I, I've uh, I have a few experiences that I think would be worth sharing with. The miraculous metal. Uh, so, two come to mind. One, one was when uh, I went on a pilgrimage to to India, and uh, th there's there's a lot of kind of backstory as to why that was important to me. But they they have a beautiful shrine in Southeast India to Our Lady of Alankani, and leading up to September eighth, it's the the main feast day when the apparitions happen, like in the 1700s. So they have these long celebrations, and when I went there, uh, I brought. I don't remember how many miraculous medals, maybe several hundred, something like that. And uh, and when I would go and give them away, I, I had to stop at some point because they would, like one person would grab one and then another like little kid would come up and then like hundreds of people would almost mob me. Mm -hmm. and, and especially because most of the people there are, are Indian and so I looked very different. Mm -hmm. So it was just amazing to see grace work in people that were so humble to where mm -hmm. they, they were just mobbing me for it. Mm -hmm. and, and afterwards, I would kind of pray with it and just like, at first I'd be bothered, but then I would think, you know what? They are so right. That's how we should feel. Mm -hmm. We should run and just mm -hmm. want to kind of grab the grace from people. Like as mm -hmm. if people were handing out hundred dollar bills, that's mm -hmm. how we should respond. And it, it was just amazing, really amazing to see that. Uh, another time I went with some friends to uh, the World Youth Day in, in Rio de Janeiro. And and the, uh, the final mass was on the Copacabana Beach. And, and I had kind of separated from the group, was a little bit more towards the front. And and we had on that uh, pilgrimage, we had taken like about two or 3,000 medals because um, people would pass out um, like little trinkets, like like flags or ribbons or from their countries. And so I thought, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we pass out miraculous medals? Because it, it's a graced sacramental. So so we passed out so many of those. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then at that mass, when uh, when they went out to distribute communion, there was like a million and a half people on the beach. They did not have enough um, hosts to be consecrated to give mm -hmm. everyone communion. And, uh, and we had ran out in our local area, like where I was, they had ran out and we were kind of wondering, are we going to get the Eucharist or not? And I was kind of sitting there praying and, think, and, and thinking about my friends, wondering where they were, wondering had they received the Eucharist. And, and we were really looking forward to that mess. So we really wanted that to happen. Then I was kind of in the group that I was. I didn't know the people that were around me. And out of nowhere um, came, I, I don't, I think it was a woman. It, when I try to remember who it was, I had I couldn't see them. It's almost like it was a person wearing a veil or something. But someone kind of came through the crowd, and they stopped right in front of me. And and they had a a, a bowl with with the Eucharist, and there was only mm. one. Oh and then, my goodness! Wow. And then the person said, "The body of Christ," and and I was the only one to receive. Before oh. I received, I was half thinking, "What is going on? Who is this?" <laughs> Uh, and then also thinking, is everyone around me? Are they going to beat me up for 
for this, <laughs> but I received the Eucharist and, and I was, I was just dazed. I, I couldn't even yeah. kind of put my thoughts together, kind of figuring out what was going on right after mass ended. I kind of thought about it and it's almost like, like as if grace told me, you know, it's because you passed out so many mm. miraculous medals that the blessed mother took care of you. Oh, uh, in, in a way that was almost like in preference to everyone else around you. It's almost like, wow. like these are all my children, but I prefer you and mm. I, and you, and you get Jesus, mm. you know? And, and, and so, so I think when you have this love for the miraculous medal, which is really, you know, tied to the blessed mother, you'll have these types of experiences in your own life. Beautiful. And if people could understand that the reason why it's so powerful is not because of a piece of metal, it has to be blessed, first of all, which makes it a sacramental, but also because God and Satan and his minions, they don't see this. They see the Blessed Mother with the person. And that's why things happen, because it's not about a medal per se. It's about the Blessed Mother and and what she prays for and what God and God loves to answer her prayers. So by wearing this, we're saying, yes, I want to be with you, Mary, and I would like your prayers. 